If you want to be playing an S tier non reroll composition, you need to learn the Warlord comp. We have the current rank 2 right now who made this Warlord guide for us, and we are going to go into what the leveling patterns are, what the strengths and weaknesses are, the items for Warlords, and how to play the early, mid, and late game stages. Even though you could go into Warlords through something like a reroll Nidalee, Warlords with Katarina carry is still extremely strong and does really well in the meta against a lot of comps if you get the right opener. Let's first go into why you should be playing Warlords and also address some of their weaknesses. So unlike other compositions which rely on 4 cost and that requires you to roll at 8, Warlords are a little bit different because you can roll on both 7 and 8. Second, once you get a good start for this comp, it's very easy to get very strong and get a nice power spike, and it's pretty straightforward to play. Some of the weaknesses of this composition is that it's inconsistent against some compositions and also requires perfect Katarina items. Lastly, this comp is very difficult to force, so only do it if you get the right starts. Before we get into the leveling pattern, if you guys are new to the channel, I upload a meta snapshot every Friday on my channel and on my website, so go ahead and subscribe if you are new. And right now we're ranking Warlords in the S tier right now. But let's get back into the leveling guide. A typical game could look something like this, where we level up to level 4 on stage 2-1, level up to 5 on 2-5, and on this stage you should have at least 10 gold to make interest. Uh, if not, you could delay the level up, and then we reach level 6 at around stage 3-2, and typically at this point in time we have around 30 gold left. If you are really weak, say you did a full loss streak in stage 2, you could roll down at this stage as well. For level 7, you want to level up at stage 3-5 if you can stay above 30 gold, and if not, level up at 4-1 and roll down for upgraded units on 4-1. At level 7, we have two different options. After the roll down, if we are pretty close to Jarvan and Vi and Katarina 3 star, you could go back up to 50 gold and slow roll at level 7 until you hit all the 3 star units because that is one of the win conditions of the composition. Alternatively, if you have Warlord chosen and a Warlord spatula, you could try to go for 9 Warlords instead and level up to level 8 or 9 later in the game. You can typically do this if you do not have too many extra copies of Jarvan, Vi, and Katarina. When playing in this way, go to level 8 at around 5-1 or 5-2 and pretty much play from there. Now onto the items. The item priority is always Gunblade, Quicksilver Sash, and then Titan's Resolve on Katarina, and the alternatives to Titan's Resolve is either Infinity Edge or Hand of Justice. All other items that you make should be made to support Katarina. Aura items such as Zeke's, Locket, and Chalice are really good for this. Alternatively, you could do a duo carry with Katarina and Trindamir if you hit a lot of attack damage items such as Infinity Edge, Deathblade, Guardian Angel, Giant Slayer, and Hand of Justice for Trindamir. For everything else, build some tank items, build some utility items and just build any sort of support item after you get your Katarina 3 items. Speaking of items for the carousel priority, play how you normally would in any other game. Don't force warlords, so while you do prefer swords and rods when going for this composition, you never go into a game thinking you're going to play warlords. What you should do instead is go for whatever's best in the meta and then pivot into warlords if you get a strong opener for it. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get into how to play the early game. So early game, again, you could play very flexibly. You don't need a specific start quite yet because you could pivot into this composition later. For example, if you did like a full lose streak stage two and rolled down at level six on three, two, like we talked about before, and you hit a warlord chosen, you could transition to it into that point. Uh, but if not, you do something typical, like some sort of Vanguard start with some backline. Oftentimes it's sharpshooters because Nidalee is a sharpshooter. Uh, so you could do like Garen, Nidalee, and hopefully Katarina with like another vanguard and another sharpshooter and that would round out your comp pretty well. Just keep in mind we can't always force this opener. As for leveling, like discussed before, you want to level pretty aggressively, leveling up to level 4 on stage 2-1 and level 5 after the carousel in stage 2. But apart from that, just play your best board and don't think about Warlords until you get the Warlord chosen, or until you get good Katarina items. Apart from vanguards, another popular starting board is something with keepers or brawlers, as that could work as a decent frontline as well. Now onto the mid game, when we do our roll down on either stage 3, 2, or 4, 1, we want to aim to get to 6 Warlord and 2 Assassin with Pike. So during that roll down, you want to make sure that you have a Chosen because it makes it a ton easier to hit. Just don't forget about Pike. During stage 4, if you have a lot of copies of Katarina, Vi, and Jarvan, or if you have like a Nikos on your bench, go ahead and try to slow roll for Katarina. What slow rolling means is that you roll down your gold until you hit 50. So if you are at 60 gold, roll down at level 7 until you are at 50 gold and rinse and repeat this every single 
turn until you hit your desired unit. And I have a gameplay guide on this about how me and my friend got to masters by just doing only slow rolling. Uh, so you guys can check that out after this video if you are more curious about that type of strategy. During your rolldowns, the best chosens are Vi, Jarvan, and Katarina with Warlord. Uh, but any Warlord Chosen works. Lastly, if you're unable to get any sort of Warlord Chosen, going for something like Vanguard from either Chosen Sejuani or Aatrox works pretty well too. Typically when you do this, you're kind of going for like a top four, but it's still something that is an option. Now we move on to the late games. So in the late game, a typical board will look like this. Running something like six Warlord with two Assassin, two Slayer with Samira is extremely powerful in the super late game. So this is the board you strive for when you are pushing for like level nine. After you get the core comp with Samira, you could add on another legendary such as Set, another two star legendary or like a two star Sejuani. Also when you hit level nine, if there's something like a Warlord spatula on Carousel, you could go ahead and try to go for the nine Warlords as that is super, super strong, especially with a Katarina three. If you have both nine Warlord and Katarina three, it's often like an auto win. Now let's go on to some of the quick tips and positioning considerations for this composition. So moving Katarina left and right during each round is a little bit risky, so only do it if you know exactly who you are facing. If you do not know who you are facing, I typically like to keep Katarina in the center because then she normally gets good ultimates by walking one square after the fight starts. However, if you can predict that you're against a clumped up team, definitely put Katarina on the same side as those people. On the other hand, the way to counter Warlords if you're facing a lot of Warlords in your games uh, you just need to position your carries away from Katarina. It's pretty difficult to because she's just one unit and you often have to move your entire team, but it's just something that needs to be done. You could also use something like Shroud to slow down the Katarina ultimate. One composition that is good against Katarina, however, is an assassin comp because they'll often jump to your backline and kill your entire backline before Katarina kills theirs. Two last tips that I have for you guys. Slow rolling on level 7 for Katarina 3 star is often more consistent than pushing levels. So Unless you have absolutely zero chances for getting Katarina 3 star, that's the only time you would want to go for level 8 and 9 unless a game has some extreme circumstances, so most games do try to go for Katarina 3 star at level 7. I typically only go for level 8 or 9 if I already have a ton of upgrades already and have literally zero other reason to roll other than looking for Katarina. The last tip is Vi, Jarvan, and Trindamir are also important carries and should not be taken lightly in the comp, especially with items or 3 stars. So if you do get Trindamir 2 star with some attack damage items, he's still gonna pull his weight and Jarvan and Vi, very strong units themselves if they get to three star. That's pretty much all the tips I have for Warlords right now. So if you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And if you are new to the channel, check out the meta snapshot, which I release every week on Friday. And right now I have Warlords in S tier, so definitely look out for that. Thanks to DQA for writing this guide and, and go and check out his Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash DQA underscore TFT. Apart from that, that's it. I'll see you guys next time.